As we move into the next phase of the course, we need to talk about the difference between cash and accrual accounting. So basically, net profit for a business can be calculated using two different methods. And the first one is cash accounting. That measures net profit by determining whether cash has been received or paid. So basically what it means is, if no cash changes hands, there's no revenues or expenses. So under this method, we're going to calculate net profit as revenues received versus expenses paid. If a revenue isn't received, we don't record it. If an expense isn't paid, then we don't record it. That is different to accrual accounting, whereas that measures net profit by determining whether the business has earned revenue or incurred an expense. Where the cash has changed hands is irrelevant. So under this method, we're going to calculate net profit as revenues earned versus expenses incurred. So the main difference here is we've got revenues under both, but with cash accounting, it's received. Accrual accounting, it's earned. And for the expenses under cash accounting, it's whether they're paid. But under accrual accounting, it's whether they've been incurred. So how are they actually different? Well, let's take an example. During January, a business had the following transactions. Here's their revenues. So during January, there were credit sales of $20,000, but none of this has been received yet. However, accounts receivable from last month, which was December, have repaid $7,000 of what they owed during January. With expenses, on the 1st of January, the business paid $10,000 for the rent, but that covers both January and February. So if we're going to do net profit just for January for each method. What would that look like? So we'll do cash accounting on this side of the table and we'll do accrual accounting here. Let's start with revenues. So under revenues with cash accounting, it'll be just what's received. So looking at this, we've got credit sales of $20,000, but none of that was collected. So we're not going to record any of that on the cash accounting. However, accounts receivable from last month repaid us $7,000. So we better put that in. Even though it's from a different period, it has been received. So we would call that revenue. Whereas revenue earned under accrual accounting, this accounts receivable from December, that doesn't go in, that was earned last period. It hasn't been earned in January. But we would put in this $20,000 because it has been earned. Even though it hasn't been received, it's been earned this period. With the expenses, we paid $10,000 for the rent, but it actually covers January and February. However, under cash accounting, we just put in what's been paid. So we'll put $10,000. That doesn't really make a lot of sense though, because it is including February's. So what we'd rather look at is what's been incurred. What will be incurred during uh, January? Well, that'll just be the $5,000 rent there. And what we'll end up is up with is very different net profits. So under cash accounting, we've got a net profit or actually a loss in this case of $3,000. Under accrual accounting, we've got a net profit of 15000 And basically what we're going to end up with is you know, a series of differences depending on the transaction. So let's take a look at some transactions and whether they've been recorded under both. So if I had a cash sale, that is going to be a revenue under both cash and accrual accounting. But if I had a credit sale, I actually wouldn't record that under cash accounting. Uh, I would under accrual accounting though because it has been earned. But if the money hasn't been received, then under cash accounting, we're not going to record it. Cost of sales, that's an expense, but it's not a payment. So it actually wouldn't go under cash accounting. There is no cost of sales. Under accrual accounting, we know that is an expense. It's the expense of earning revenue. Expenses paid for in cash. Well, that would be an expense under both systems. But if there's an expense incurred on credit that doesn't involve cash, well, we wouldn't record that in cash accounting, but we would under accrual accounting. Receipts from accounts receivable, well, that actually would be a revenue received. It might be in the wrong period, but it doesn't matter under cash accounting. But we know in, in accrual accounting, that is not a revenue. Likewise, with payments to accounts payable, it's going to be the same. Uh, because it's been paid, it will come up as an expense in cash accounting, but not under accrual accounting. What about if the owner contributes capital? Well, under both systems, even though there is cash received, we, that's not a revenue in either sort of system. Uh, capital contributions don't meet the definition of revenues. And likewise, drawings don't meet the definition of an expense under either method. Looking at some other sort of more particular transactions, what about GST? Well, GST is never a revenue and never an expense under either method. Discount revenues and discount expenses, that's a little trickier. Is that going to be a revenue or an expense under cash accounting? So with these two, it's like, not like you're spending or receiving money. It's just you're either saving the amount that you're going to pay, so you're spending less, or you're going to receive less. But on its face, that actually wouldn't go under cash accounting because on its own, it's not actually an inflow or outflow of money. But we know under accrual accounting, we should record that. That's a legitimate revenue or a legitimate expense. It's the saving or... Um, 
receiving of less money, that actually meets the definition of an expense. What about money borrowed from the bank? Well, that's never a revenue under either system. Likewise, a loan repayment, that's never going to be an expense under either system. If we buy an asset for cash, again, on either system, that's never going to be an expense. Or if we buy one on credit, that will never be an expense either. What about an inventory gain or loss? So we've covered that. Uh, well, when you think about an inventory gain or loss, there is no money changing hands. So that will never be recorded under cash accounting, but it should be. So under accrual accounting, we would record those as revenues and expenses. And finally, an inventory write down, just like with an inventory gain or loss, there's no actual change or, or flow of cash. So it's not gonna be under cash accounting, but under accrual accounting, it would go in. So looking at all those transactions there, there's a lot there. We don't need to know them all right now, but I guess we could say there's a lot of things in common. Some of them have the same sort of treatment for both, for cash accounting and accrual accounting. But accrual accounting records more things, like it records things that should be recorded that cash accounting does not. So which of these methods is more accurate? Well, we're going to say accrual accounting, and it's the most accurate because when you think about running a business, some transactions overlap different periods. There might be a difference between when the transaction happens and when the money is received or paid. So we need a system to account for that. Also, some revenues will never be cash, like a discount revenue or an inventory gain. So we, we still need to record those, whereas cash accounting, we wouldn't record them. And on the opposite hand, um, expense, some expenses will never be cash, like a discount expense or an inventory loss. So accrual accounting is clearly the best method. Um, it, it factors in all the things that would actually determine a business's profit. And it's better because of what the theory says. So accounting theory says we've got relevance, timeliness, and comparability. And it says, when we run a business, we need to be able to make good decisions. That's relevance. We need to have the information we need when we need it. That's timeliness. And we need this information so we can compare the performance of our business over time and with other businesses. That's comparability. Then we've got a thing called the going concern assumption. And that says the life of the business is assumed to be infinite or continuous and go on forever. But then we sort of break that up and say the period assumption says you have to measure the performance of the business regularly. So we break that infinite life undergoing concern into periods of equal length. And then lastly, what do we do at the end of these periods? We produce the three financial reports, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. So what, you know, finally, why are we going to use accrual accounting? Because there is an accrual basis assumption that says, all right, once you've broken the life of the business into periods of equal length, so you can make good decisions, have the information you need when you need it, and compare performance. We are going to calculate profits by revenues earned, not received, and expenses incurred, not paid. So if we take all that together, these rules all as a combination sort of say, well, we have to use accrual accounting because it's going to result in the best possible decisions that we make. So what does all this mean? It means we want to use accrual accounting instead of a cash accounting at all times. And to do this, we're going to have to record a new type of transaction, which is what the rest of this course is kind of about. And those transactions are called balance day adjustments, which we'll call BDAs. And all we're going to do now is go through some different types, uh, chapter by chapter, and look how to record those under accrual accounting.